iron throughout Africa, depending on their genes and the area with, within which you find them. Lucky lady on the front seat there. We've got a great view of him as he strolls off. And as you can see, there are two other vehicles with us in the sighting. So we're going to try and work around them and we'll all kind of take turns and try and leap le leapfrog ahead of him as he moves and that way keep a tab of exactly where he is. What I'm thinking of doing is possibly let's just stay behind Taxon for now. It's always a bit of a lottery when following animals through thick bush like this and with the, you know which route to take and sometimes racing off wildly Although it may seem like the right thing to do, it may not be. So we're just going to take it slow. We, of course, really don't want to interfere in his movements. And by us crashing ahead and rushing around recklessly, that would definitely have an impact on any possible prey that may be ahead of him. You know, maybe there's a big buffalo waiting for him to try his luck on. But like I said, with a bit of patience and teamwork with the other vehicles in the sighting, we shouldn't have too much of a problem keeping up with him. And what I'm even thinking of doing, because I know he's heading into such a thick area, is maybe getting one last glimpse of him here and then looping ahead through a little riverbed and then maybe getting another view of him. But for now, he's thankfully stopped to have a small toilet break. And isn't that a magical sight with all the grass seeds this beautiful big mane lit up perfectly by the other vehicle for us. Absolutely awesome. I'm going to keep moving. Now, if I remember correctly, I think there may be a little way through this riverbed, but I'm a bit rusty, so I'm not going to take any chances, and I think I'm going to go around. Hello Cheryl, you would like to know if the animals in the camp where we are working at are as habituated as the animals here. To a degree, yes they are, to the vehicles. They've become fairly used to the vehicles out, here, uh, out there, just like they've become used to the vehicles over here. However, they're a little bit more cautious of people on foot because they do come across herders on foot. Uh, they tend to be a little bit more shy of people on foot but if you're in a vehicle you can get really close both to the lion the leopard the cheetah but I think we are very very fortunate in the Sabi sands and that there are so many vehicles that follow these animals very closely that allows them to become so so habituated and relaxed with the vehicles okay I think we're gonna scoot through a little spot over here on the right Squeeze tight, everybody. I'm just going to be a few seconds, and then I think I may have a good view of him coming towards us. If not, I'm going to send you back to Brent until we do get into a favorable position. No. No good. We're going to be a few minutes getting into a good spot, so we'll send you back to Brent, and I promise we'll call you back as soon as we are in a better position. This is so awesome. We've got him again. He's in a much more open area and we are viewing him entirely with infrared light. It's not completely dark yet, to be honest. But I'm still blown away by how awesome the technology is that's allowing us to view these animals after dark. And both other vehicles have also managed to catch up eventually. So all three of us are here, which like I said is very important. Without teamwork in a place like this, it would be a very lonely and boring safari with very little animals to see. It's only that all the guides work together, share their knowledge, share their sightings, share information that allows it all to work out and everybody to get to see the great things that we do.
Now I wonder where he's deciding to head to. Look at how wonderful that is, just a meter or so behind the vehicle. You can see some of the guests on that vehicle are a little bit concerned, peeking over their shoulder. Let's just stop here and watch as he decides where he's going to head next. Dave thinks he may have heard him vocalizing when we were driving to catch up, so maybe it was just the vehicle noise and the earpiece. Earpiece that stopped me from hearing that. And we could, if we are very, very lucky, get to hear him vocalize, and that would be an absolute treat. Shelly, I agree. I would love him to roar. And Shelly is urging Mr. Mfumo here to display his singing abilities. It's really interesting. He's really slowed down here, which for me is quite interesting. He got up, moved quite quickly to this area, and for no apparent reason to us, he has stopped. As you can see though, he's sniffing around quite carefully and what he may even do, I'm guessing, is do the phlegm and grimace. He may be smelling other lions, possibly some prey, but there's some kind of a smell that's caught his attention here. Let's watch closely. You can see him very intently sniffing the grass. What can you smell, mister? Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a very powerful sense of smell, but the only thing that I can confidently identify the smell of is KFC. And I'm probably good at about 100 meters off any one of their franchises, but anything else than that, I'm gonna have to be right on top of it to smell it. But these wild animals certainly do have some senses that our little brains cannot even comprehend. You'll notice quite a few little moths and bugs flying around. And their numbers will subside as we go into the winter, and there would have been a lot more in the height of the summer. Oh, bless you. Nice sneeze there, and I guess one of the catches with trying to sniff what's been moving through the grass is that you inhale some of the grass seeds into your nose, causing a very ticklish sensation, and then a sneeze to get rid of it. Oh, looks like he's coming back to investigate. Now, he came from more of a southerly direction this morning, so I'm told he came in from the south, which means this would have been the first time in a while that he has smelt this area. And I guess it'll just be one of those mysteries that we will never get to the bottom of, whether it's a pack of wild dogs that he can smell, another lion, a leopard. It certainly has stopped his initial plans, which were to head north. Ali, we've just got a wonderful theory from you, wondering whether or not a red dot laser, if shine, shone in front of a lion, will trigger it to chase it. Now, stranger things have happened, and I know for a fact that domestic cats and dogs do like to chase a red dot laser. So there is a very small chance that lions could be the same. It's something that we wouldn't try though, not for all the money in the world, because as I've said earlier, one of our biggest goals out here is to actually not impact and interfere on their behavior. Even if it is something as innocent as playing a little game of chase the laser with a lion, it's not something that we would want to do, because where then do you draw the line? You know, you've got to have ba barriers or kind of limits with regards to viewing these animals and how close you get to them or what you do to get them to move and essentially less is more and we don't want to get them to do anything unless it's their own kind of natural behavior.
I'm going to see if we can't somehow get ahead of him so, so we can get him pacing towards us. But it's a little bit tricky because it's quite thick here. Hello, Dry. You would like to know if we have any hope in this line popping out on the dam cam. And sadly, at the moment, he's probably about a kilometer and a half as the crow flies to the north and west of the dam cam and he is continuing in a northwesterly direction so he's heading away from it at the moment he's kind of heading towards Sibambili I'm guessing um, so kind of north and west he could pop out at Buffalzook Dam but he's heading a little bit more west than that at the moment Okay, we've nearly got to a good spot where we can stop and wait for him to approach us. I'm just trying to drive slowly because even though you guys can see it quite light, I'm looking in pitch darkness, operating without the headlights, which is more of a trial than a necessity. Oh, I think we're in luck. If he keeps coming here, there is a big puddle from which I'm hoping he will drink. But, is he going to veer off into our direction? He's behind the bushes, he's kind of to the left of where you are now, Dave. He could pop out into the left-hand little gap there. Oh no, here he comes. I think we're in luck. I think he's gonna come straight towards us and have a drink from this little puddle. So we've got very, very lucky here. And we are so close, we may even hear the sound of the water lapping. Absolutely wonderful. Now we have to be understanding for the game viewers who are shining their spotlights on him because of course none of the guests can see anything. So we'll excuse them for that. And watch this big old boy quench his thirst. It would be interesting to know how many liters he takes on now. Maybe a liter or two. And that's what takes so long, because each little mouthful is certainly not putting too much moisture into his mouth. And I'm told you could just faintly pick him up. There's a bit of move, uh, ambient noise with the other vehicles moving around. So I was a possibly a little bit hopeful, and he's a little bit further away than I anticipated him to be. Let's try another time now. Now we can hear him. Now he's going for it. I'm glad I don't have to drink like a lion. It would be awfully frustrating trying to have a down a glass of water on a hot day when you can only do it one kind of lapful at a time. Absolutely awesome guys, well our luck really has been with us this afternoon. And I've thoroughly enjoyed absolutely every minute of being out here with all of you. And the cherry on the top is that we're getting to see this big, big male lion having a drink. And as I mentioned earlier, quite fortunate for a lot of the animals at the moment. There's moisture around every corner, albeit in a little puddle like this. And that certainly won't be the case in three or four... Come on, do it again, <laughs> about five or six times, preferably. <laughs> yes. How incredible is this? You don't get any better.
well. We couldn't see him roaring, but you could definitely hear him. And even though he was facing away, it was absolutely wonderful to hear. I think he's just getting warmed up, to be honest. And if we stay with him a bit longer, he could well try and chat with his other coalition members again. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn on the lights now a little bit. I can't believe how lucky we are, guys. That is absolutely awesome. And I'm guessing what may happen is that the guides may now head back to camp. They've hit the jackpot with their guests in terms of what they've seen. And then we may be lucky enough to enjoy the sighting all alone. Only with the infrared. Have they got him there, Dave? Okay. What I shall do is get my little flashlight out and try and work out where he has gone. And while we try and work out where this big male lion has disappeared to, we're going to send you back to Brent. So thankfully Mfumo has decided to take a path of less resistance and he's now on Impala Plains Road, which is going to make following him a lot easier. It also becomes quite nice and open, at least for a short section here, where we should be able to get some good views of him. And I'm going to follow Texans route. There is a whole herd of Impala running off away from him. Just up ahead of us, you may have got a glimpse of them. So they are fleeing the scene. As would I if I was an Impala and there was a big male lion walking towards me. I think they heard him vocalize earlier and that's possibly why they didn't actually alarm call. They just decided to run off. So... He's in all likelihood going to scent mark here. Watch closely. There we go. Where they urinate against the bushes, leaving a trail of messages for other lion. I'm going to see if now we can't loop ahead of him as he paces along this road. Hopefully we can get into a little bit of an opening. Oh. Hello, Tanith. You would like to know how often males lions mate, and they mate as often as they possibly can. Whenever they get lucky, they will take that opportunity. It all depends on how often the females or lioness come into season, and that all depends on kind of pride dynamics, how big the prides are, and how unfortunate or fortunate they are with regards to raising their cubs. If they raise cubs, to adulthood, then it can take a long time for them to actually give birth to their next set of cubs, whereas if they are unfortunate and lose cubs, then they'll give birth or have to mate more regularly. So it fluctuates greatly on the area and on the individual male lion's luck. Even in Mfumo's case, even though there may be wanting females, it may be other members of his coalition that are more powerful than him that get to mate. So there's a lot of variables in that question. But the short answer is as often as they possibly get the opportunity to. So he's continuing north. And if he continues like this, he's going to kind of have two options. He could either veer west to Sibambili or he could head more east towards Buffelsook Dam. So we'll see what happens in the next few minutes. But for now, all I can assure you is that he is heading away from Juma and away from the dam camp. So unlikely that we're going to get lucky enough to see him there. But we've got him here now and let's see how long we can stay with him. Just 
this tool. I'm thinking possibly, well we'll just let the other vehicle go ahead quickly. It's very important to maintain good relationships with everyone and we've had a few great views of him so I'd like the other vehicle oh, listen. He's roaring again. is absolutely wonderful and although we couldn't see him at least we could hear him for any of you who are watching for the first time it's an incredible incredible noise to hear in the African wilderness that of a male lion roaring and I hope you enjoyed it a lot of you if it is your first time may be surprised at the audio that the lion has made it may be different to what you were expecting and you, you'll find that a lot as you continue to enjoy Safari Live. There's a lot of strange noises that the animals make. Leopards also make a very strange noise that I certainly wouldn't have expected them to make. And now I have to make that noise for you. It sounds like sawing through wood with a wood saw. So that is the sound of a leopard. You've just heard the lion and you will get to hear the many other noises as you continue to furry, follow sorry, the Safari Live adventure. So as you can see the vehicle that l l kind of snuck ahead of us is now giving us a little chance to view him and there are a few other vehicles wanting to come into the sighting and they are going to be coming from the other way so I'm thinking what we should probably do is just stop here we are not going to be able to get in front of him again the bush is simply too thick ahead of us and what we'll do is we'll let him continue off to the other vehicles of guests that are I'm sure very excited to see them they may not even know what they're in for the guides often keep it a surprise so enjoy these last glimpses of Mfumo as he heads north and I'm certainly very, very grateful for the fact that he did get up, roar, drink, and roar again, which has made for an incredible evening. Well done, Dave. Thank you, Mfumo. That was magical. <laughs>